Well, if you don't know about XAML, don't worry, I will be quick. If you do know about XAML, I'm going to assume you're like 99% of the rest of the world who works with XAML, who thinks euphemistically there are significant opportunities for improvement. I'm being recorded, so I'm trying to be polite. Um, so lots of people look at XAML and go, that's not very good, let's use something else instead. Typically, they abandon the platform completely, or they go, well, we'll just build everything in C Sharp. There is someone who has spent significant time probably just one person who has spent significant time trying to find a better way of working with XAML. And lucky you people, I'm here tonight to tell you all about it. Um, and I'm going to show you how we take some XAML, make it much, much nicer to work with. And I'm going to use examples from C Sharp, because I assume you know C Sharp, and you'll appreciate that because things work well in C Sharp, they must apply to XAML. And it all makes sense, trust me. So I'm going to use this app as an example. Um, I'm sure last month you were all really inspired by Clifford to go out and learn MAUI and build things with MAUI. This is the Donet MAUI official workshop app, or it's the app you'll build as you work through the workshop. It's a simple app. It gives you information about monkeys because of the XAML heritage. We get a list of monkeys on the left, you click on one, we get a detail page on the right. This is the detail page. Typical XAML, right? And we can zoom in, and it's still typical XAML, and you can't read it, and there's too much of it. And I can squeeze it all on one page, and wow, I can squeeze it all on one page. But I wanted to build a simple app with a simple UI. I didn't want to write a novel. This is more novel. I don't want to deal with that. Let's get rid of that and make it nice to work with. Now, if you had a big C Sharp file, a big C Sharp method or a class or something, and there was a bit of that file which made sense on its own and you might reuse elsewhere, you'd probably abstract that or extract that, put it somewhere else. So here's the header. Oh, my nice pinks or purple. Here's my nice header with the image, and it's like half of the file. So let's get rid of that. Put it in a separate file. Simple. And yes, I've made things smaller and simpler, but I've kind of copped out a bit because I've pulled it away. So let's look at the thing I pulled out. This is the thing I pulled out. Two things to point out. One, there's a comment. It's a comment that says what the code does. Now, as I've ab extracted, abstracted, extracted the file, this doesn't make sense anymore because I might be showing more than monkeys. And we don't want comments that say what the code does. If you have to add comments that say what the code does, any language, not just XAML, that's a bad comment. If you need comments, they should say why the code does what it does. So we'll get rid of that. And you'll also see that there are all these numbers. And all these numbers are the same, or they're obviously very related. Now, are they related, or is it just coincidence? If you had a C-sharp file with loads of numbers in it, wouldn't that be a red flag? Wouldn't you, you know, create a constant and refer to it everywhere? Of course you would, and then you'd see if there was a relationship. So let's do that. I've created a double, size 80, is the circle radius. Yes, it was all about numbers. And I've got, I need to know the circle diameter. So I calculate that, because why wouldn't you? It's a computer, it's good at doing maths, and then I can use that value everywhere. Lovely. I'm going to look at that and go, Matt, that's loads more code than you had before. You said you're going to make this simpler. And yes, I've made it easier to work with, but it's more complicated. However, there was a thing about the Microsoft example, and that was it was really bad, and it used loads more code than it needed to. So if we get rid of the things we don't need, we can make it simpler. And there are ways we can make this even simpler, but we're in that side file. Let's go back to the main file. And let's look at the details. Oh. If you can see, it says details of monkey, and then it's got this vertical stack layout. What's that about? That's not really helpful. Well, there's a comment, we can get rid of that, and a vertical stack layout. What does that mean? Well, let's replace them as well. It's the page details. That vertical stack layout was the content of the page, everything that wasn't the header. Well, let's give it a name that explains that so we don't need a comment. They, the, the properties on that stack layout, they were the standard padding you put at the side of every page. Well, you shouldn't have to specify that on every page. We'll pull that out, do that as well, and the space in between items. That's going to be the same throughout the app. You shouldn't have to keep respecifying these things. Lovely. It's getting better, but there's more. Let's look at the button. The most complicated thing on this page now is the button. In some ways that's good, in some ways that's bad, but it's an element with six attributes. Six attributes is far too many for any simple button. And a lot of these properties, they're either not needed or they could be in the style. So let's get rid of them. Lovely, it's getting better, it's getting better. But we've got these styles. Let's talk about styles. Oh, I've got a button and I apply a style to it. I've got a label and I apply a style to it. I've got a label and I want to make it a micro label. Taking one thing and turning it into another. Hmm, sounds a bit like casting. If I say I've got a button, now I'm going to turn it into a button outline. It's a bit like saying, well, 
give me a person and I'll turn it into a student. If I know I need a student in C-sharp, I would say, give me a student. So let's do that here. I just created some new types in the new namespace, but instead of having a button which I turn into a button outline, I now just have a button outline, and I have a medium label instead of just a label which I apply a style to. Where did they come from? They were magic. If you were writing C Sharp, you would use source generators, wouldn't you? Of course you would. So this is a library which works just like source generators, but with XAML. It will look through your resource dictionaries, find styles with names, and generate types that automatically apply those styles. It's just magic. So that's where these things came from. But button outline, what's that? Medium label, what's that? Where do, where do I use that? Why should I use that? What does it mean? These names aren't helpful. These names don't tell me anything. They don't give me a clue where I should use them or why I should use them. Names should do that. Let's give them better names. Text button. It's a button that can only have text. That it's got an outline right now doesn't matter because in the future we might restyle it. We might want to have a flat background or no outline. We don't want to keep changing the type or making new type. It's just a button with text. Default text. Yeah, if it's not a title, if it's not some special case, just call it default text. And then we've got secondary text. It's not a micro label. What's micro label? It's just, this is a secondary text. This is additional information, useful, but styled differently from default text. Okay, great. Let's give it a name that helps us understand what the code does by looking at the code and not running the app. Oh, getting through it. Oh, something here. So string formatting in a binding. Yes, you can do it. There are two big issues why you shouldn't. Firstly, you can't localize that. Secondly, far more importantly, this is application logic. The application logic says this should be formatted like this. Well, I can't test that without running the whole app. Running the whole app takes time. I want my unit tests to be fast. Let's just put that logic into the view model. Then I can do my localization and I can do my formatting and testing really fast. So we'll pull them into the view model. It's looking much better. Oh. But then look, we've got these things. We've got a content page, which has a single scroll view, which has a single vertical stack layout. We're three layers deep. When we were talking about um, Firescope namespaces, we heard about the wonders of just pushing everything that way to getting less white space. But three things, oh, we're going to need that a lot. On most pages, we're going to have a vertical layout, and we're going to want to scroll if we need to. So let's just create a vertically scrolling page. What a good name. What do you think that does? <laughs> Looks really small, but we've got this massive thing at the top. All these extra attributes and properties we're specifying on our top level element. Look, most of them are namespaces. If this was a C-sharp file, these would be our using directives. And what would we do for a C-sharp 10 or above? We'd pull them out to a global usings file. So let's do that. Look, much simpler, however. I have a fork of Maui where this works. However, this is not valid XAML because it's not valid XML. And Visual Studio and all the third party tooling in the world which works with XAML files assumes they're valid XML. And so I can't change Visual Studio and all the third party tools in the world. So we'll have to not do that. Instead, Let's think about this differently. If we we're in our editor, in our C-sharp file, and we had all these using directives at the top and we didn't want to see them, what would we do? We'd collapse them, wouldn't we? You've got the outlining, you'd fold them away, not have to worry about them. But look, there's no way of doing that, because you can't collapse individual attributes within an element, except I made a thing so you can. Look, they're gone. Wonderful. Uh, before I get the question, because I know where I am, it doesn't work in Rider yet. I know how to make it work. It will be coming shortly. But look, we've got rid of five long lines, one small collapse line. Lovely. So we've gone from this horrible monstrosity you'd never want to work with, because you just look at it and go, ugh. We kind of made it a little bit readable, but actually, oh, this is tiny. I've got this page, it's got seven elements on it. I've got seven things on this page. This is really valid XAML. This is real work. This works in every stage. This produces exactly the same output. It doesn't look like the XAML you're used to. But wouldn't you rather work with a little file or lots of little files than one massive file with loads of duplication and weird comments and weird formatting and no white space because you haven't got the space for it? If you're not familiar with XAML, or not familiar with this code base, can you look at it and if someone said, oh, we need to add some more information about a monkey, we want to add their average life expectancy, and it needs to be sort of secondary information at the bottom between location and population. Can you do that? 
assuming the data's in the model? Of course you could, because this is lovely to work with. Once you get set up and get used to it, it's fast, it's easy to read, it's really easy to maintain and change, which are the big objections to XAML. But this is XAML. I said I was going to be 10 minutes. I really hope I've stuck to time. Um, but if you have more questions later, I will happily talk about this for hours and hours and hours, or as long as you wish. Um, but thank you.